All right. Well, welcome everyone to our speaker chat for March 2020. I can't believe that we're at March 2020. How did that happen so quickly? It's crazy. So I'm just taking a look here. I want to make sure that we are live. I see us now, which is awesome. Okay. So I'm just going to close that one out. So today I'm really excited to have with us Anne-Marie Cross. Anne-Marie, thank you so much for getting up early and joining us as you're across the world from me right now. Yeah, man, thank you for the opportunity. Looking forward to it. Yes, it's, we've done some great work together in the past, Women Speakers Association, Ambitious Entrepreneur, and I thought it would be a great opportunity for us to once again touch base because Podcasting is, it became, it's, it has become even more prevalent now, I think, than when we first started a few years back. Yeah, it sure has. I mean, I remember when I started my first co-hosted show in 2008. And back then I would, and for a number of years actually, would have to explain to people what a podcast is. And uh, no longer do I need to. So that's exciting. Yeah, it is very exciting. <laughs> the world is caught up. <laughs> I know, right? Now you got to keep on top of things. So today what we're going to talk about is how to build your reach, your reputation and your revenue with a thought leader podcast. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go through this process of I'm going to ask you some questions and get you to share your wisdom with us. And we will, you know, touch base with our our viewers. So if you are watching right now, give us a shout out. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, we will take little pauses in this to go back and check and see um, who's making comments and so forth. Sometimes with technology, we don't always get to see everything. If we miss something, we'll come back through afterwards and you know address any questions or anything that you have that come up during that time. So what I want to do is do our questions. Here we go. I just actually removed something here. So... Um, I want to do an introduction because I don't want to miss anything and your bio is so robust. I think it's really important for people to know what it is that you do and who you are. So Anne-Marie Cross is the CEO and founder of Ambitious Entrepreneur Podcast Network and Industry Thought Leader Academy and author of Industry Thought Leader, How to Go from Invisible to Influential and Profitable with the Podcast. And if you want to grab that book, you can grab it off our WSA bookstore as well. Um, dubbed the podcasting queen, she is recognized as a pioneer in this space by her clients and community after starting her first podcast in 2008. And she has continued to produce thousands of podcast episodes for a podcast network and alliance partner since that time. Over the years, she has won multiple awards for her podcast. She has been listed among the top podcast lists for entrepreneurs and small businesses worldwide and has podcasts that have been syndicated with both national and international radio. She now works with experts who feel like the world's best kept secret, cut through the noise, build their reach and their reputation as an authority in their field with their own thought leader podcast, where they can begin to nurture listeners to, into leads and ultimately paying clients from their very first episode. Now, I think that's probably what we all want to have. Like, that is incredible. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I'll share a story before we dive into, uh, into to today's questions. But um, there was a podcast that I started after the, my one of my business's worst failures. However, three episodes in, and I started that podcast as a way to then go out and interview other incredible business women and leaders. I thought I'm going to, I'm going to um, interview them and see what they did to overcome challenges and failures. Three episodes in, I accidentally made two four-figure clients and I thought, well, if I can make that money accidentally, what could I do if I did it strategically? So it was then that I took a step back mapped out all of the steps that I took um, to get to that, uh, you know, to get to that stage. And now that's what I teach to, to clients. I'm so glad you took that step back and, and figured out what it was that you did that was so successful and share it with others. Because I think a lot of people, they, they know podcasting is important. It's a great way to get your voice, your message out into the world. But you want to, you know, in most cases, people want to have a podcast that is going to also bring them an income of some kind, whether it be as a direct result through sponsorship or, or so forth, or whether it be, you know, and a relationship that's built that turns into clients and, and moving forward. So very cool. 
Yeah, it is. I'm excited to be able to help people today. So um, let's get dive in. I'm ready when you are, Tracy. Okay, perfect. And just as as we're going through these first questions, if you have a podcast, we'd love to know what your podcast is called. So go ahead and put that in the comments below. And so our first question, and this is a really good one. What are some of the common podcasting mistakes to avoid so we don't end up I guess a lost pod fade, yeah, pod yeah. fade, and yeah, absolutely, great question. And it actually goes back to something that you said earlier, Tracy, and that is that we all know now. Many, many marketers are saying you need to start a podcast. A podcast is a great way to get your message out and build a deeper level of engagement with people, which it is. But one of the things that I have found is there's seven common mistakes that I've made previously because I started my first co-hosted podcast in 2008. We struggled to monetize that. So after two years, we had to give that up. So, you know, a lot of what I teach now is also based on don't do what I did. And what, there's seven, as I said, seven mistakes, but let's have a look at three. And the very first one is no clear strategy um, for um, your business and how you're going to leverage your podcast other than, hey, I want to build my reach, want to build visibility. So I'm going to launch a podcast. Everybody, I'm sure that is part of WSA they have a message that they want to share to make a bigger impact in the world. They're selling their expertise. So one of the things that you said about external sponsors, I say to people, don't build an audience that you're then going to, to, to monetize someone else's message. You need to focus on monetizing your own message. And so now that there's so many more podcasts being added to the space, it really requires us to do some deep thinking around, well, where do I want to build a legacy business? Where do I want to make the biggest impact and how am I doing that what are the other things that I'm doing in my business and how can a podcast integrate but also build momentum for everything that I'm doing so one strategy fits all it's not a good, um, you know, not a good idea. It's dependent on who you are, what you enjoy doing, and ultimately your message and your ideal client. So that really is uh, very much around strategy. The other thing is no clearly defined niche, brand or message. One of the things that I found when I first started podcasting, and we called it Career Success Radio. Now, we could have niched down career success. What does that mean? Are we working with executives or are we working with graduates? Because that's going to really define the type of information that we share, the key stakeholders that we invite on the show as a guest, the other influences in the space. If we really want to become known as that thought leader, the go-to people in the industry, you know, our topics, our message, our guests, the calls to action has to be niched. It has to be really refined, especially if you want to cut through the noise. And then the last mistake I want to share today, Tracy, is that dependent then on, on your niche, on your strategy, you have to have podcast creatives, such as the title, the introduction, the music, everything creates an experience. Mm -hmm. And I find that a lot of people don't create a unique experience that introduces people to when I mean, they're listening to you, know, to you, people come and they listen a lot to that in introductory music. If you're not creating that ambience, which then sets the stage for you to shine, you know, your message, and if you're building a, bringing a guest on, then that unfortunately um, can often, yeah, have people go, no, this podcast isn't relevant uh, for me. So music and all of that really makes a huge difference too. But those would be three of the most common mistakes that I see. I love that you mentioned strategy because I think with everything that we do in business, you need to have a strategy and a plan, know what you want to achieve and where you want to go. And it makes it so much easier to get there. Yes. Um, and then clear, clearly defined niche. So, you know, I talk about keywords all the time and, and being able to niche it down so that people can find you easily. The people that you're trying to attract can actually find your podcast and the information that you're sharing is important. And yeah, you're right about like the creatives. I, I hadn't really thought about how important the podcast creatives were with the, the intro and that whole, that whole experience. And it's true because people, you want people to want more, you want them to come back. You, they, they want it to be something professional. And it's interesting because I saw um, an article the other day about Spotify is now going to make it easy for people to do their podcasts. And, but what it's going to do is probably going to flood the market with podcasts that are not going to be the caliber 
of what you want to be representing as a business, especially if you want to grow your business from your podcasting. Absolutely. As a change maker, as an aspiring thought leader. And I love that you said that, Tracy, because one of the things that I'll often say is, you know what, there's good news. And then there's bad news about podcasting. The first is it's easy to, to, you know, create a podcast, pick up one of these things, record and upload it. The bad news is it's easy to start a podcast, grab your phone, record it and upload it because every single piece of content that you share, every interaction, every engagement, and that is very much with, your, you know, your guests impacts and creates your reputation, your brand. So you can either enhance that or you can do the opposite by, you know, a defocused message or if you're unclear, you know, content for content's sake um, with no purpose is not going to build thought leadership. So I totally agree with you. Be mindful of all these things before you press record. I think too, you're, you know, we're talking about being a thought leader. So I think you have to kind of embrace that that's how you want to present yourself. I mean, it may not be, that may not be the route that you're going to do with your own podcasting, but for those that want to be a thought leader, uh, the go-to person in their field, their niche, then you really want to, you know, intake everything that that's being shared today, because it's really going to have an impact on the success of, of your podcasting efforts. So so true. All right. Well, I'm going to move on to the next question um, and then we'll go see if I can take a look <laughs> in our comments area. Um, so you say that focusing on vanity numbers and getting listed in Apple's top podcast charts is unwise. Why is that? And why should we focus? What else should we focus on instead? Yeah. So, so it's such a great question, Tracy. One of the things that I'll say to my clients and even my community, focusing on vanity numbers, especially if you really want to make a bigger impact in the world. And also if you're looking at reach, if you're looking at reputation and revenue for your business, I would much rather have a smaller niche audience of engaged listeners, people who are my ideal clients, who are sharing, you know, my content, who are reaching out to me and saying, I love that episode. And then eventually, as they get, you know, through the nurturing sequence, they say, you know what, I'm ready to, to make a decision and I, I'm deciding to, I want to work with you. I've had conversations with podcasters who have had you know, over a, well over a million downloads who ended up having to walk away from the podcast because they created this beast that wasn't really focusing on their business. So you can create a, a, a podcast that really has incredible um, listenership and, and people talk about it, but then is it also generating the ROI, you know, the income? So I would much rather focus on quality, on niched, you know, ideal audience and then work on that. And I always say to people, speak to an audience of one, because if you can speak to her, to the heart and soul of what she's struggling with, what keeps her up at night, that audience of one will go to two, to four, to eight, and so on. And then, you know, it takes a little bit of time to build those foundations, but eventually your audience will, as you do a call to action to nurture and intrigue and, you know, get her from the podcast onto your list, she'll do that because you've engaged, you've educated, and you've empowered her. And it's so simple when you put it that way, talking to one person, I think that's what we, we get stuck in. I, we being collectively, I don't know, I can maybe just speaking myself, but you know, you're thinking about like how, how are all these people out there that I want to reach. But if we're just talking to that one person, it takes the pressure off you. You know what that one person wants. And when you're talking to that one person, there's going to be aspects of it that other people are going to relate to as well. Right. And then they can bring their additional questions to you and so forth. And not everybody's the same, but you're still addressing their concerns. Yeah. It's so important. I think we don't spend enough, enough time, even though we had, we do talk about a lot, who's your client avatar um, and get clarity on that. But I mean, really get clear on it. And when you start to incorporate language and, and often many of us are in, and are in business because we've walked the journey before, you know, before we've solved the problems, we've overcome challenges. And now through that, along with our experience, I call it the distinction triad. We have our aptitude, we have our attitude and approach. But when we build that all together, a wrapped around how we can speak into the challenges of our ideal client, 
that is a deeper level of engagement. And when you incorporate that into a podcast, she or he is going to feel like you are speaking specific because you are, you know, because maybe you were, you were him or her. Uh, so uh, yeah, powerful. Definitely. And I can see some comments. So we have Tanya Allen is watching us. She says, hi. <laughs> we hi. also have uh, Leslie George and Sue Sutcliffe. Go deeper, go home. <laughs> Great exactly. comments. All right. So um, if you have any comments along the way, please continue to leave the, your comments below in uh, below our video right now. And if you're watching replay, you know, definitely still, if you there's something that comes up or maybe, you know, there might be an aha moment. In fact, I know there's going to be several during this. So please go ahead and share your aha moments as well. As well. So for businesses who have been told they can repurpose video content by stripping out the audio and uploading it to their podcast, you say this isn't a good idea. And why is that? And I'm curious about that because, you know, we could be doing today, we're doing a, a Zoom interview to Facebook live. Now, something like this is not good for stripping out and putting into a podcast or do we need to do something else with it? I'm going to leave those questions to you. Yes. And exactly what you just said, you know, often when we are creating a piece of content, say for video and live streaming, and I do do that too, um, you have to provide context to your audience, especially for podcast listeners, because we don't have the visual element. And it depends on the kind of language that you use, such as we see over here or looking here. Those words are very much visual, whereas audio is hearing. It's, um, you know, so there's a different words that we use. Now, also, too, if you think that, again, it has every single piece of, of content, especially your podcast episodes, has to have a purpose. And I find that many people don't think about the purpose of the, of the content and they don't provide context. So what I typically do, and I'm, I'm interviewing Sue a bit later on as part of the Industry Thought Leader Masterclass, and I will be sharing that on my podcast. But here's what I'm going to do, because the introduction for my masterclass is very different than the introduction to my podcast. So I will create a bit of a snippet and add it to the to the, the podcast episode once it releases an audio ver a version. And it will say, hey, I wanted to bring you a masterclass that I did with Sue. The reason why it's so valuable is, and I'll give them a couple of reasons, and say, now on to the show. So I give myself permission to sometimes have video because we will be sharing the screen and so forth. So you've got to provide context and give the listeners an understanding that hey okay it is going to be relevant for me and if there is some things that Anne-Marie or a guest say look at this or we're sharing the screen I know that I want to get as part of that you know that community so I can see it too so provide context because you don't want to break the rapport with your audience that you've been you know working so hard to create. So that, that, yeah, that's, that makes total sense because it, if it is taken out of context, this, you're not going to help the audience that you're speaking to in your podcast, but also keeping in mind that, you know, what you're doing, there might, there's going to be relevant pieces. So as long as you kind of almost preface things before, and you know, like, Hey, here's one of the questions that we had in the speaker chat about podcasting with Anne-Marie Cross. And the, one, the question was this, and then we could, you know, we kind of like kind of pull it in and kind of, you know, I guess, I guess almost kind of dub things together if you are able to do yeah, that. Yeah. And, you know, other marketers also say, you know, be mindful of the platform and, the, and the, the native platform upon which you're posting. You know, you might, you know, re-engineer re, um, or rewrite a post that you'd be sharing on LinkedIn than if you're sharing on Facebook and then on Instagram. Well, podcast audience is quite different from, say, a visual aspect as well. So you need to be mindful. And how did, you know, what was the intention, the purpose of starting that podcast? And you need to make sure that you whatever content you're bringing in is is deemed as relevant and as consistent and that context is very important so you've touched on strategy you start you've touched on consistency too i love that because that's another part of of continuing to build out um, your podcast and really being niche specific, specific and and being able to provide content that is going to be relevant to them keeping in mind that 
depending on the platform in which they are sort of digesting it, you want to adjust it accordingly. Yeah. Cool. Um, so another question I have is for businesses who podcast, they're always looking to increase their downloads and subscribers. Do you have any tips on how best to do that? Yes. I answered this question the other day as part of an intensive I was running and people go, that is good. I thought, well, I'm going to share that today. You know, so often we look at ways to increase and of course that that's very important, but we're focusing on the wrong things. The podcast and, and it, it starts with the title. It starts with the title because someone will read it as they're scrolling through. And if you haven't grabbed them by the title, you've probably lost the opportunity. Once they look, because you've got to put yourself in the mind of the consumer of the podcast. Once they see the title and they think, oh, this is interesting, they'll press play. So all of the things we talked about earlier about the creatives and the introduction. And so if you haven't hooked them right at the beginning, they're out of there. And then the content. So every piece has its purpose and everything combined ensures that someone will listen and continue to listen. And I say that, you know, you need to build intrigue, you need to compel someone to click to listen, you need to compel them to want to stay and come back. People come for the topic, they return for the host. People come for the topic and they return for the host. Because once they listen to you, and if you're doing a solo show or you're interviewing someone, how you engage with them as part of that creating that experience is going to determine whether, whether they want to come back. So that is how you increase subscribers. Be purposeful and intentional with all of those things and people will uh, come back. I just had someone that connected with me over on LinkedIn and she said, I found your podcast over on Stitcher. I wanted to connect with you and say, thank you so much. She said, because I give episode new podcasts, three episodes. And if there's banter and if there's fluff, I'm out of there. Now, your, you know, someone's audience may enjoy that banter and fluff, but I know mine don't because they've got limited time. So what they, you know, they want the information, they want to be inspired and empowered so that they can go and take action. And, you know, that's what I do. I commit to with every single episode. And she said, your guests don't do that. So um, yeah, that's so important. It starts from the title. Yeah getting your keywords in there, knowing your niche and what they're looking for, solving problems or, or addressing concerns that they might have are all going to help people find you. And then I love what you said that they, they come for the title or they come for the topic and they stay for the host. And it really is about relationship building. There's other people out there that may be talking on the same subject, but it's how you present. It's, you know, who you have as your guests. It's how, you know, how that process goes that they're going to love and that's why they're going to come back for more. Yeah, sure thing. I'm just going to do a couple more shout outs to people. We have Zara uh, is watching us and uh, Sue was in response to being interviewed later today. It's like, she can't wait. Tanya says, love that tip. I always, always teach provide context. Yet when we see so many pop into our Zoom video directly into their podcast, thank you for that confirmation. And uh, Tanya also said another great tip, audio versus visual. So see, we knew that there would be some great tips that you'd be sharing today. And I love that people are responding and commenting. Uh, I know that I'm about to have a podcast myself, and this is just going to put some more steps into my process too. So it was very timely to have you on our show today. Uh, so this is cool. Um, I seem to like that word today too. Uh, tell, so tell us, <laughs> tell us about the often common missing piece that'll enable you to nurture listeners into leads, inquiries, and ultimately paying customers from your very first episode. Um, really, every service-based business owner should be doing with their podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this goes right back to episode zero and the first three episodes of your podcast needs to very much um, 
provide incredible value to your audience. However, it's you really speaking some of your truths, insights, foresight, hindsight, all of that uh, as a really good introduction to your podcast. There's a couple of reasons why. And I shared this recently uh, with one of my clients who's also putting a podcast together because, and she validated this so much to be true. There was someone that she started listening to uh, a podcast. And it was episode, just say, say 35 or so, and she had a number of more podcasts. And my client said, after listening to the host, she said, I was really intrigued and wanted to know more about who this host was. There was no real episode zero that dove into who she was, what this podcast was about, and, and expectations, you know, of what the podcast would bring, just a whole lot of interviews. And there was nothing, you know, to say about who she was, the host, and the services that she would offer. Missed opportunity. I mean, how many people love the host, love the experience that you're creating, but you haven't provided um, a, a sequence for people who say, I want to know more about this person. How can I do that? How can I, that next step? There's three, when I talk about business growth, there's three stages of a customer journey or a buyer's journey. There's awareness, there's consideration and then there's decision. And so often the call to action on a podcast is subscribe to my podcast, you know, give us a like, share it, leave a comment so our ranking goes up. But for me, I'm focusing on those that small percentage of people who are ready to take that next step, who are ready to, uh, to learn more about me because we've just hung out, whether I'm doing a show on my own or whether I'm interviewing a guest. And that call to action is to access my three-part podcast series, which helps them dive deeper into what I know that they're struggling with. That is the call to action. And the reason I say a podcast series is because you are sharing content on a podcast in audio form. A lot of the calls to action is from a podcast, sign up to my video sequence series or sign up and get my ebook. I know people who listen to podcasts because they love audio and they don't like reading and they don't have time to watch video. So give them content in a consumable way that they are consuming the content that you are now engaging with them on. So that's why I say, you know, a three-part thought leader podcast series is so good because the awareness is the podcast episode that they've just listened to. The call to action for consideration is then taking them through, giving them mini wins, positioning you, you as that thought leader, the authority, that, that uh, person who knows what she's talking about. And then ultimately, you know, that whole podcast series um, has various components that nurtures that no like, and trust so that the decision uh, you know, the call to action, which is the decision. And that that is what um, what I came up with, with the process of the three-part episodes, you know, on the, the Women in Leadership podcast that I talked about earlier, Tracy. I thought if I can do that and people came to my website, they listened to the three episodes and rang me and then I was able to, what is the process that we can incorporate in our podcasts as a way to, re, you know, to, to um, create, recreate that, but in a 24-7 nurturing kind of way. And that is what I recommend all thought leaders do or aspiring thought leaders. Get people onto your funnel or into your funnel to be able to nurture that relationship. But start with that three-part podcast series uh, first and episode zero. I love that. You know, I never really would have thought of that, but it's, it goes back to that relationship building, right? Where you get them there with the title and then they stay because of the host. I would also imagine too, that if you make it easy for people to learn more about you, your whys, your, you know, why are you doing this podcast? What services or what benefit can you offer? You're also going to more easily attract other podcasters. that want to have you on as a guest, which also will help, you know, put you in front of your action. niche. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And how many people, um, are, well, we're speaking, this is Women Speakers Association, and they speak from stage, and people will often say, have you got a podcast? You can say, yes, I do, but if, if, because you're obviously, and I'm assuming you're talking about the same topic that your podcast series is uh, positioning you for, you give them, that is a gift. 
because it is that you know and that is something often too that we can share from stage you know when we're not allowed to, sh to sell a product you can say to people you can use this even in media interviews if I've only just scratched the surface if you want to dive deeper sign up for my three you know my podcast series where I talk about this this and this and here's where you can access it and, and usually it should be a lot of my clients have their domain name forward slash podcast series beautiful little squeeze page there uh, and that gets people onto your list and then of course you've got that nurturing sequence that then continues to nurture that relationship so much great content today i'm just going to go back and read a little bit more from our our guests here um leslie said i love the tip of the music i'm just starting a podcast in june so it was a great tip tanya says i see a lot of people call their podcast after their name for example, the Tracy Eman show. Oh, maybe that's what I'm calling mine. No, I'm only kidding. Um, <laughs> and that's a great idea. Or would you name the podcast after the theme for the content or business growth podcast? So yeah, it's interesting, right? There's, is there two different thought processes for that? Yes, yeah, there is. I'm glad someone asked that question. So thank you. Absolutely. Um, so again, depends on the strategy and depends on what you are wanting to build. So unless, and here there's two thoughts around that. It's great to put a, around your name. And I think a lot of the, the high profile influencers, they do do that. But your podcast is an asset that can be sold. Now, I'll give you an example. And this kind of confirmed it. Um, I've got, I had a podcast called The Ambitious Entrepreneur Show. That's the award-winning podcast. It was listed in a lot of the top this and top that. And I decided that I was going to put a hold on the production because now I'm doing industry thought leader podcast. I had messages from people that said, oh, would you consider selling that? I'm really interested. Would you consider selling that? Now, obviously there would have been a process, but the fact that I had half a dozen people reach out to me that said, would you be, because they wanted to continue to, you know, maintain and leverage off the momentum that I had built and the reputation that I've built. I can't or could not sell the Anne-Marie Cross podcast because mm. it's personally branded. So what are you building? Secondly, uh, I tend to have podcast titles that are also uh, incorporating the keywords and phrases or the desire, the outcome that my ideal client wants. Hence, industry thought leader podcast. A lot of my clients want to become known as thought leaders in their industry. So if I called it the Anne-Marie Cross show, it's not tapping into those keywords either. So I've got some clients who um, work with their SEO strategists too. And we make sure that if we can get a podcast episode or, 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 or a title that taps into that, every time your podcast name is mentioned online, adds to the SEO too. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. The decision ultimately is going to be on the individual but, you know, just a couple of things that I've learned along the way. So for me, um, I would always go the outcome, the promise of value, the keywords that my ideal client is uh, searching for. Because who knows, down the track, you'll be building this asset that someone else can see value in as well that you can sell. Perfect. Yeah, it just makes it easier for people to find you that don't know that you exist, right? They can't, they don't know that they should search for Anne-Marie Cross but they do they know that know, they can know yeah. Yet who, right? who I am. Be thought leader. Yeah, for sure. Right. It's, 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 it's one of those buzzwords in a way that people know that they want to be, you know, like an influencer yeah. or whatever it might be. So, yeah. um, you know, well, one of the reasons I, I think like this is because I've had a number of guests that that's the brilliance of interviewing of being a podcaster. You interview so many people. Um, but one of the, the ladies that I interviewed many, many years ago, she was a business broker and she would often help people sell their business. And she said, Anne-Marie, it's very difficult often for service-based businesses, particularly if they're very much the brand um, of their business, the face of their business. And so she said, always when you're starting a business, and in this instance, a podcast, what is the end in mind? And I think many of us don't value the, um, the influence that we are building through sharing our content and through creating this channel, this medium that allows us to speak. So I always see whilst I'm the face and the host of or the voice of my podcast, it very much, I see it as a separate asset to mine. So, you know, building your list because down the track, 
that is something that can, you know, later be sold. I mean, if we look at, um, you know, Adriana Huffington, you know, the Huffington Post, she sold that for, I don't know how much, but she created this incredible entity that where other people saw value in. And that's kind of what I look at when I'm thinking of, you know, the building business and then building the podcast, which is really a, ch a great channel to be able to build that, uh, that reach, obviously. But I see it as two very separate entities. Does that make sense? And assets. Totally makes sense. And something that uh, I, I think is really important for people, especially as they're getting, just getting started. It's like, once again, back to your strategy, what is your goal? What is your ultimate end game end for your life. podcast, right? Or for yeah. your business in, in, in generals. And that sort of will help you decide whether you want to go with, with your name, which is totally fine, or whether you want to go with, uh, you know, a niche keyword, uh, rich title that are going to attract people that may want to take over your podcast at a later date. Uh, yeah. Tanya says, that's awesome. Um, Debs had just tuned in and already, uh, already getting brilliance about name your podcast. She loves that. So we are almost at the end. I wanted to know how, how people can get a hold of you, Anne-Marie, because I know that there's going to be, you know, questions there. What's your website, for instance, we can put that into the bottom of our comments afterwards. And do you, I don't know if you have, a. Uh, like a freebie type of yeah absolutely we've just um released something because well when i say something it, it it's a quiz so all you need to do is go to podcastingwithpurpose.com forward slash quiz and what it does is it, there's five pillars there and in the five pillars there's some key aspects and it, it is, are you ready to launch your thought leader podcast? And often when I show people, people come to me and they go, well, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this, I'm ready to launch. And when they look at this, they go, okay, I'll get back to you. Or, or you know, okay, I see that there are some gaps that I need to work. So access that. Um, once one of the things that I do every quarter, we're doing that four times this year, we've already done it recently, is run an intensive. So podcastingwithpurpose.com forward slash intensive, where we dive so much deeper into what we've spoken about today, really around the, you know, that reach reputation, which we've spoken about, but really around that revenue, because many of us who have been in business for a while, we are leaving so much money on the table and there are certain things that we can do within our podcast that really helps us to soar far quicker um, when we see that value and we're able to wrap that, uh, you know, into that podcast series and ultimately the ongoing podcast. So that might be something that people, there's a wait list, um, but many people that participated had so many ahas as well. Um, but those would be two, uh, two resources for the quiz and then get on the list for the intensive. And then from the intensive, you'll, you'll learn about our change makers um, community, which is here on Facebook, which gives you a great opportunity to, to connect with me and, and other change makers who are up to an awesome things with their podcasts and speaking and all of that great stuff. Perfect. So uh, when you go, when people go to your website, they'll get uh, autoresponder with information and so forth. So that just so everybody knows, that's not from Women Speakers Association. You're signing up to get information from Anne Marie, but I know that I am going to go and check that out because I know I need to take the quiz myself. And I think that is such a fabulous tool to kind of get yourself going in the right direction, right? Yeah. What I've also included with that quiz is there's a video of, I believe it's session three or four, where I actually talk through my three podcast profit models. There's the formula, the framework, and then the pipeline, which can be funnel too. But the word funnel has some negative connotations in, in some fields because unfortunately some unscrupulous marketers, they take it to the whole you know new level, which people don't, um, don't really appreciate. So that explains a little bit more in depth and sort of this is the kind of thing that we'll be teaching in the intensive too, but some great resources to dive into there. Wonderful. Well, thank you again for getting up early and joining us today. It was, I knew there'd be so much value and it, you did not disappoint. Um, it was so exciting to have you on, on speaker chat this month. And we look forward to having everybody join us next month for um, a yet to be determined guest. Uh, actually, no, I know who we're having, but we'll be talking about that later. So thank you so much, Anne-Marie. This has been such a pleasure having you as a guest. You're welcome. Thank you so much for the opportunity. You're welcome. Bye all. <laughs>